On Radio 97, it's time to talk law with our resident lawyer, Despina Priala of boutique law firm Priala Legal in Runaway Bay. She's with us every Thursday at this time. She brings her legal expertise, providing some general advice on the latest hot topics. She's got experience that spans more than 25 years in in areas including property and commercial law. She also prepares wills as part of estate planning and litigation. With us once again on this Thursday morning, hello, Despina. Good morning, May. Good morning, Brooke. Good morning, Despina. So we're kicking off with a bit of an unfortunate story. Um, I can't believe it. We were talking about pivotal, uh, pivotal homes going bust just about, you know, three months ago, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And now Oracle Homes, huge business, has now gone bust as well. And people are literally left with half a home. So mm-hmm. we have some news uh, and I guess some points that we really want to push and raise for those people that may be struggling because of this now. Yes. So as you say, it's a very sad situation. And I will put it out there, as I've said this before or alluded to it, there will be more builders going broke. Everybody's talking about it. Um, It's an extremely vulnerable time. Um, And if you were going to embark on this, I'd be very careful about going and you know, engaging a builder to build yourself a home because it's a very, very um, a vulnerable position that uh, I think these people have found themselves in. And it's very unfortunate. And most people are saying out there that there will be more builders going under. Um, it's just um, the reality of it. So uh, yes, a very unfortunate situation. We want to talk about some practicalities today to help those people who may be listening out there or maybe someone who knows someone um, that mm. was engaged with Oracle that have, can tell them about the information we're going to talk about today uh, very briefly. Um, so let's talk about, um, as I said, some of the practicalities. First of all, we know now, as of the 26th of August, that the builder's license for Oracle Homes has been uh, cancelled. Now, under every build contract, the cancellation um, of a license will be uh, bring the contract to an automatic end. Okay. On that, on that uh, day. That's right. So 26th of August. Now, when we talked about the Pivotal Homes disaster, um, we did raise some very uh, important points then for the listeners out there, which one of them was this, that you've only got three months from the date the contract comes to an end to lodge a claim with the QBCC. Okay, um, so uh, you, people might have seen the story come on this week about Oracle Homes, a very unfortunate case of a young couple. Their house is incomplete um, uh, and it's terrible. And then there was another man that came on and said, oh, yes, I've been waiting nine months to get my deposit back uh, yeah. from the QBCC on another claim. So uh, for what it's worth, um, I don't think it's a situation where people out there should say, should I, shouldn't I? Uh, it might take you know a year or so to get anything and it may very well take that long with the QBCC now so backlogged because of all these um, disasters. The point to make is this, go and lodge your claim. You've only got three months from the time the contract comes to an end. Now I've calculated the 26th of August would take you to around the 25th of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's going to be your cutoff date to lodge your claim for the Oracle Homes situation. If you find yourself in that particular situation yourself so you've only got the three months if you do not lodge your claim within that three-month period you have lost your opportunity to do so i want to make that really really clear there's this three-month cutoff time you've got to lodge the claim with the qbcc the qbcc like i said with the pivotal homes disaster is they're not going to knock on your door and say hello would you like to make a claim that's not what they're going to do the onus is on you as the homeowner to do so And it is the way it is. There's no point grumbling about it or I know it's a very horrible position to be in, um, but you've just got to go and do it, okay? Um, So that's really critical. The other thing we want to talk about uh, briefly is in the story that was uh, posted, I think it was this week uh, or maybe on the weekend, last weekend, about the Oracle Homes disaster was, well, what happens uh, to the homeowner in that? What rights do they have with things that might be left on site? So you've got a builder who was building and then you've got a builder who might have brought materials on site that might be left on the site. They go bust. Um, What happens to those materials? As a homeowner, can you just have access to those and it belongs to you? And the answer is not yes. (laughs) It's not black and white, no. Well, there's a couple of things people need to understand um, as unfortunate the situation you might be in. The building materials that come on site are loose items, okay? They're not, these are ones that are not fixed to the land. They're not 
part of the home already built into the home because you, the home has been built. You've presumably paid the builder to a certain point for that work carried out under the build contract. And it may very well be you might have owed the builder money at the time they went under. I don't know. That would have to be assessed um, down the track. But we're talking about items that are on site that are loose. So wherein someone can just walk on site, carry them off, right? Um, so those are the items we're talking about to be really clear. The homeowner ju can't just come on and take whatever they want, mm. right? It, it, it really want to stress that. And each case might be different, but, and this is the reason why, and it gets a bit complicated, but I just want to get the message out there as disastrous as it might be as a homeowner, you can't just go, well, all of this belongs to me. Everything on the site that's loose, that's, you know, sitting here belongs to me. No, not necessarily. Most cases it won't be the case. So things like machinery uh, as well, anything that just happens to be there, uh, it's not necessarily yours. Kind of. That's exactly right. So what you've got is, you, this is the situation I want to paint. You've got a builder who has obviously brought materials on the site. Now those materials may or may not have been paid for in full. Mm. Typically they're not, right? Typically the builder might owe um, monies to the person that he got the goods from, right? So the builder orders goods from various suppliers, right? Those Then he brings them onto site because he's going to carry out building work. Now he might have paid for those goods in part, then still owes money to those companies, those suppliers. Now, um, those suppliers, uh, and we call it um, at law, retention of title, um, and people who may be lawyers out there listening, Ramalpa clauses have been around a long time, um, since 1973, I think, so with the Ramalpa case. But you've got these clauses in these contracts that say, well, these goods still belong to me because you yeah. haven't paid for them. And until you pay for those goods in full, they're my goods. So the suppliers out there, for example, might be going on to these homes uh, where the site, these Oracle home sites, right, where they've built these homes are incomplete and they might realise, oh, we've still got stuff on site. I'm going to go collect it, right? And they may very well be entitled to do so. So you've got those companies there. Then on the other hand, over here on this side, you've got the liquidator for Oracle homes. So when the liquidator oh, comes messy. in and assesses, yeah, everything that Oracle Homes um, uh, has, their financial position, creditors, what they're uh, maybe owing to other people, um, Mr. Liquidator might come in and say, you know what, everything that appears to have been owned by Oracle Homes, including anything on site, like loose items, now vests in the liquidator and the liquidator now owns all these assets. So there's there's this struggle between the liquidator, what he's owed, and the supplier company, for example, over here that says, hang on, they're my goods. And those supplier companies might also have securities registered over those goods. You would hope so as a supplier. That's what you should be doing in business. And that's another topic. Um, but yeah, there's this struggle. So the homeowner really doesn't get involved in my view too much. It's not something where the homeowner can just go and grab for themselves. Yeah. Yep. So the homeowner doesn't technically have the final say in each case. It's the supplier, uh, uh, the liquidator, the homeowner's floating in the background. So it, it really, it, it is a quite messy and it's hard it to is, it is quite messy. someone just claiming something very easily. Exactly right. The other thing I want to briefly mention is, which we touched upon with the pivotal homes disaster is the home warranty scheme. Now, um, you definitely put your claim in, but remember, unfortunately, or it is what it is in Queensland, you've got a maximum amount coverage of two hundred thousand dollars per claim. So, um, and, and if you've if you've actually got the top up, so at the beginning you had to have, um, if you wanted to, to increase that coverage, you had to do so right at the beginning of your contract, at the time mm -hmm. you entered into the contract, not afterwards. You could increase the coverage to three hundred thousand. Now, that's not something the builder does; it's something you do as a homeowner when you're about to enter into the bill contract, you go, you know what, I'm going to increase my coverage. And you would have had to have already done that. You can't do it now. Okay. Yeah, so um, 300,000. So it's 200,000, or if you've got the top up 300,000, that that is your maximum claim. So um, your losses might be more than that. It's a very unfortunate situation. Um, and I said this before with the pivotal homes, reach out to the liquidator. Once the liquidator is appointed and it's formally announced, reach out to the liquidator 100% for those losses. Um, and in that 200000 coverage, there is a $5,000 coverage within that 200000 that covers things for accommodation and storage. So, the, you know, you've got this home, it's incomplete. Homeowner's going, where do I live? I was you know, expecting to go in. 
do I just bring my caravan on site? I mean, if you own the site, you own the land. You can potentially do that. Maybe council might come down on you for that. I don't mm. know. Um, but you've only got $5,000 to cover you for accommodation storage expenses, but you're not, not going to see that money till down the track. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> no, much anyway, is it, at in, all. The, in the scheme of things? Yeah. Um, now, so, just... Yeah. Just briefly, Despina, uh, just to, to, to wrap up, you mentioned that uh, there undoubtedly will be more uh, builders collapsing in, in the coming months and in the coming year or two. Um, just a question for you. Would you be building a new home right now? <laughs> or anytime soon? Mm, um, probably not, it to be honest. Too um, risky. Yeah. 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 It's it's a very unfortunate uh, time that we have um, seen ourselves in in the last six months. I don't think it's going to get any better, I'm being honest. I'm not the only person saying that out there in different industries, particularly in the construction and building industry. It's expected that more builders will go broke. So um, all I can say is if you really want to build your dream home, you really have to take precautionary steps. Find out who the builder is. The QBCC is a website that has an abundance of information that is free. So all at your fingertips, you type in your your builder's name, all of their license details come up, financial information, uh, whether they've had any demerit points issued in the past by the QBCC, whether they've had their license suspended, um, any orders to rectify, all of that is available on the website. You just need access to the internet and you can do your own research into the builder that you're thinking of engaging. Then the second thing is have your bill contract vetted by a lawyer. Um, that we do that all the time for clients before you sign that bill contract. Mm, there you go. Handy advice as always. Thank you, Despina. And uh, coming up next, another unfortunate news story hitting headlines last week. A poor couple lost $40,000 because of a fraudster posing as an agent. If you need advice to try and avoid this type of disaster because it's happening to so many people, that's coming up on Talking Law in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> 